or we're not the having testing could not make that. Okay. Well, we have a quorum, so I will call the meeting to order at 531. Do we have any adjustments to the agenda? Okay. Great. We're gonna do the we're gonna appoint a chair next one. Yeah. I think that would be good. Yep. Would be good. Okay. Um do we wanna assign times and timekeeper or do we just wanna to try to be diligent about moving through? Nobody cares. <laughs> okay. I think we can. Okay. Well, we'll just try to be conscious of the time and and you know give give good discussion, but uh, try to keep moving them. Okay. Um, motion to approve the minutes of Monday, November seventh, our regular last regular board meeting. So move. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 All right, is there any public comment? Jess, is she her head? No. no, is she the only public here? Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, uh, moving on to board comment then. Um, I wanted to comment that um, Ethan has resigned from the board um, and we really wanted to thank him for all the incredible work that he's done on our board and um you know the work that he has done has been extremely valued mm -hmm. it'd be greatly missed yeah I, I wasn't there when the, you guys were in the fire in lines it seemed like you're in the foxholes and everything else how tough it was but my clear impression is that his leadership and his style and his ex ability to empathize and to to hear and to understand and to be welcoming over those difficult times made a huge difference in how we came out of this thing and I'm enjoying now my participation with this board where we're able to focus so much of our time almost all of our time on the essential things and what's best for the kids how do we get there how can we help um so i um i think we're and the communities of rochester and stockbridge were very very blessed by having ethan bowen as our leader for these years and i wish him well all right uh if there's no further comment we'll move on to celebration of learning yeah so um the Fifth and sixth in Rochester and the four, five, six in Stockbridge uh, went and did snorkeling at the um, Civilian Conservation Corps down on 73 in Rochester. And it's all about they get to learn and look for the elements of what makes a healthy river and spend the whole day there. It did get confined because of some weather issues for both groups um, to figure out like what they should be looking for and is our White River really healthy? And sustainable for our community. So um, the four, five, six students in Stockbridge have put together a couple different presentations. They have three different choices they could choose from on how to explain uh, a river ecosystem and what makes it healthy and all the components of it. Um, so there's we asked for some volunteers and there's three different groups. They're pretty short, but that's a little bit of the backstory on it. So this is student um, produced. This, this is student okay, produced. Hi everyone. Today we are going to talk about a food chain. Crayfish eat algae. Fish eat crayfish. Fish get eaten by bears. <coughs> Bears eat fish. <laughs> the river food chain, algae is a primary producer. Crayfish are primary consumers. Fish are secondary consumers. Bears are apex predators. 
Oh, that's impressive. So they got to pick hey, all Alice those and Maddie. Maddie. <laughs> um, I think there's one drawing out there, that. but they got to pick their different. This drew <laughs> dragonfly, aquatic, and, and terrestrial insects. That's cool. So they got to pick their different components, each group. So each group has a little different twist. And yeah. you need all those things to have a healthy river system, is my understanding. That's one. Welcome to Eva. It's okay. Eva's and Allie's healthy food, Jane. This is a food chain. Yeah. <laughs> the plants get eaten by the bugs. The bugs get eaten by the fish. The fish get eaten by the hawks. The <laughs> end. <laughs> we drew aquatic and terrestrial macroinvertebrates. Cool. Wow, nice. And then there's one more that's a diorama, is what I would call it. They didn't know what that was when I said that. Hi. How's My name is. is we colored glue and then we put it in and then these are ducks this is a baby duck you can't really see from that angle neither can you see from that okay. angle um and this these are our fish okay. and then we probably didn't have to label this but it was water water okay. what are all these things this is a cloud this is a tree flowers bush um this tree? is a tree another tree with a bird nest a uh, bird nest that we made. there's a tree right here this is the sun <laughs> nice all right is there anything else you want to say about this girls no all right great job <laughs> okay let's <laughs> they wanted to wash it back <laughs> that's great oh yeah so those are just three versions of their uh, so who who is the teacher or teachers that help put this? Uh, so Ms. Donna took them on the field trip because Ms. Rowe was um, on some professional development. And then Ms. Rowe took them, uh, had them for science as a whole group. And that was their science project from that. And they also had to write about it as well. They went snorkeling. Right, they yeah. did go snorkeling. So, oh, that's really neat to yeah. encompass it all together and right. with actually getting into the river and, and seeing right. what you're Where doing. Do so if you go down 73, headed towards Brandon, on your yeah. right is the uh, Civilian or Conservation oh, Corps yeah. right there. Yeah. So that's where you go down in. Oh, sweet. And it's a partnership with um, the fish hatchery and... Uh, so they the provide the service. snorkels and everything. Mm -hmm. oh, that's really I think it goes all the way back to... Uh, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt mm -hmm. and, and the Conservation Corps that he created to help give uh, good paying jobs to people that were unemployed during the Great Depression. Right. And uh, so that these places and that legacy still continues. And that's just exciting to see. I was thinking back in the day, I think I had a pretty good education. You might wonder about that, but um, we didn't have experiences like this. Yeah. 
connected. Uh, know, right? I remember so the that, the getting out of the life. classroom right. and it's pretty cool. Yeah. Going and seeing and learning and getting my feet wet and uh, the mud in my between my toes and just. It's great. I think that really. <laughs> I think it. it to me, it, it, it has a, that feeling of like I went to a tech college and right. it was I had a really hard time in the classroom, but it was once I did the lab and be out in the field mm -hmm. that I could then go, oh, I get it, you know, right. and then it made it fun. Right. You know, it has that same. Yeah, learning about these chains. Yeah. Like the, yeah. The, I think that's really cool. And then it'll come full circle in the spring. They'll race yeah. trout in the classroom. Oh, cool. And then they get to release the trout. Mm -hmm. Nice. Very it's nice. a great partnership that those mm -hmm. teachers have really. Well, good job great. to the students who did the presentation yeah. for yeah. us. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. That's great. Uh, if there's no other questions about or comments on the uh, river presentation, we'll move on to the superintendent's report. Uh, so you have my report at hand. I just wanted to highlight a few things. Um, we had a really good tour at the Rochester Elementary School uh, with EEI and facilities. And actually, Lindy and I just did another tour of the Rochester School today with your uh, maintenance and facility folks um, to just re highlight again uh, what to expect upcoming. Um, and plus, we got some other projects that we're going to be tackling over the winter uh, break. The other thing I wanted to highlight is I'm really excited that we're doing some training. I mentioned it last month on direct instruction uh, as a universal approach to teach phonics in our classrooms at Stockbridge and Rochester. All K through two teachers are going to be trained and support uh, mm -hmm. staff. That will start to be implemented as our universal approach to okay. phonics instruction. Uh, when we come back from break. Uh, and it's in Lindy's report too, but I just, I, I'm really excited um, about that work. And then finally, um, I wanted to highlight, we're starting our monthly community conversations, which is part of a project that's come out of our community schools grant that we received in the SU. Um, the first one's gonna be next Wednesday at 5.30 at the Royalton campus. Um, I put, there's, there are um, flyers that have been sent out via social media and electronically. I also, Kate McLean, our communication coordinator, is putting flyers up in all of our local businesses across the SU, so you should start to see those pop up. There was an ad in the Herald today about it, and I'm doing another robocall on Friday. I'm <clears throat> really hoping that we can start to have two-way conversations just about topics that we're focusing on um, across the SU. So we are gonna host one in every district. Um, and so there's gonna be one in the spring on math and the work we're doing in mathematics at Stockbridge. Um, I think that's in March if I remember mm -hmm. right. So um, just wanted to highlight that. I, and I'm hoping that we can, um, you know, build some momentum with these conversations um, throughout the year. Okay. I'll take any questions folks have. I just saw the final draft of um, our strategic plan today. Kate just finished formatting that. So the full board will get to receive that um, next week with um, my hope that we would adopt it. Doesn't mean we couldn't revise it if we wanted, but I'd like to get that um, document in place. Um, and I feel really good and I wanted to put a shout out. Bill worked with me on that um, from the at the SU level. Um, I feel really good about where we're currently at with it. So thanks, Bill. And I'll take any questions folks have. I just I, I love the idea of the community conversations and uh, getting parents into the school and focusing attention on important initiatives and getting their feedback, um, allowing them just to kind of enjoy the food and the company and being in a school and um, and it doesn't have to be only parents. It's no. it's it's uh, townspeople that are paying for and believe in the, the power and importance of public education for the future of this country and their community. So I love that idea and the idea that you're kind of focusing each workshop or whatever you want, a community forum or d um, dinner uh, on a different topic and moving it around the district. So I. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty important. I love that. 
What is the topic for the first? It's our personalized learning and pathways work that we're doing at the middle high school level at, at all three middle schools and at the high school. Um, and I'm really excited. Every pathway coordinator at the middle high school level is going to be there. And we're going to break the, the, our community up into different areas that they might have focus. So if you're really interested in the work we're doing with community-based learning, the community-based learning coordinator will be there to engage in that conversation. If you're interested in the work we're doing with BTVLC, one of our pathway coordinators is focusing on that. So parents can actually choose what area they want to focus on um, within the conversation. So. Yeah, I met several of them at the Wildcats night. Yeah. And in, in, in South Royalton, and they are enthusiastic. They're articulate. They believe in what they're doing. They feel that the uh, the pathways is important, absolutely important alternative or supplemental for the, the growth and development of our kids. So, yeah, I think that's a great way to start. Excellent. All right. If there's no more questions for the superintendent, we'll move on to the principal's report. Yeah, so uh, you have my report in front of you. Um, like Jamie mentioned, we really started to focus in on addressing the large gap in um, our students' performance and foundational uh, literacy skills, so understanding sounds and being able to decode words and phonemic awareness. Um, so we've had we began our work with Janie Feinberg. She came in to assess all students uh, to make sure we can start making appropriate groups when we come back from the new year for instruction and all teachers who haven't already been trained, because some of our teachers have for literacy and their intervention, will be trained on Monday and Thursday next week. Um, so we're excited to get that launched. And it also kind of coordinates a little bit with uh, some of the same strategies with the spelling mastery program. So it really will be emphasizing uh, what sounds do you hear and how to sound out words, which we find um, is a big area for instructional gap. It's a yeah. um, and then tomorrow we do have an in-service, uh, the first part of the training, we'll be doing work with our special educator um, and WRVSU equity coordinator, Dana Decker. We're gonna focus on what is equity kind of through the lens of the holiday season okay. and use oh, yeah. that to begin some conversations. Um, and then the second part of it, we will be focused on some more literacy work around um, implementing independent work that focuses uh, students building their skills around um, sounds and decoding and literacy specifically. And after that, I think that's pretty much the highlights. I um, will say that we received some initial findings from the Rochester um, High School Repurposing Committee in their work with the Brownfield study. I think I'm saying that right. Yep. Um, that there were some signs of mold in the high school. We have brought somebody in already and we have their report back to be able to get that cleaned up. It's not spreading, but it is in some very specific locations. So we'll have someone in in the next couple of days. Which um, isn't too surprising for a building that's been closed up. For right, and most of it is really concentrated to areas that were hit hard when the pipes burst. Uh, yeah, of course. So okay. it all ties together, <laughs> thankfully. Um, Which. <laughs> so, uh, and they gave us a pretty specific report of what to work on, and GW Savage has already been in touch to start that process. Okay. Great. Um, I had a question about the um, proficiency-based report cards. Mm -hmm. This is the first uh, time that they're being used, is that yes. correct? Yes. Okay, and do they look vastly different than um, the previous report cards? Um, I'll be interested to get parent feedback. I think initially when teachers first really saw them, they saw them two times originally, once in the spring to give feedback, and then again in um, August during some of our in-service work, I think it felt overwhelming, but then to actually utilize them and realize that they had been working on those proficiency-based standards anyway, anyway yeah. I think it gave some reassurance. Um, okay. I'd say the unique part is really just a, like the tech part that we're finding, which is uh, how they enter comments is a little bit different. So like visually they see it line by line and they're entering comments line by line, but it accumulates into one spot. So just that concept in your brain of how uh -huh. to 
but, but other than that, it seems to be going well, but um, they just went out today. <laughs> are, are the parents going to need additional? Potentially, we did put some information. On like how, how to read this? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Um, and tried to make them like I can statements. Um, and also the idea that it's, uh, they are assessed, students are being assessed based on like, that they're making progress, that they will meet that goal at the end of the year. So they're making an appropriate benchmark or amount of progress towards nice. that particular yep. standard. Not that like, oh, they can't count all the way to 120 yet. Um, but that's a June goal, not a, right. okay, that's not nice. a November yeah. goal. That's great. We do plan to survey families um, after trimester two yep. um, to get feedback at mm -hmm. that point. Okay. to make some adjustments too. I'm sure anything different. Yeah, I mean, a lot, of, a lot of elementary schools have used standards-based report cards yeah. for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, the big change is at the high school level and in, in, in middle school level, we have not ch gone to a proficiency-based reporting system in middle and high school yet. Um, we're really focusing on the elementary at this point around the proficiency. So I actually think, I hope, that some families would be like, oh, this is what we want. This is what I should expect my first grader to be able to do. Yeah, right? I like that. Because um, it does break those a... standards out. Right. And I think it's more specific. For really, yeah. it, it's not vague, in my opinion. But I've spent a lot of time working on it. So yeah, it'll no, be good cool. to get good feedback. I think sometimes it leaves a little room for interpretation. Mm -hmm. So okay. great. Robert? Just uh, questions about the mold. The area yeah. saying the mold was in in the places where it broke up out in the um, around the shop in that area, or was it in the east side of the building? Uh, both, I think. There's room numbers, so I would have to look mm -hmm. and line it up with a layout. But in all honesty, it just was very much tied to where there was mm -hmm. stuff, and there were a couple other spots, but not not anywhere. It, it all sounds pretty purposes. surface. It's not, yeah. It's just going to take cleaning. Mm -hmm. Right. They didn't recommend anything other than cleaning. Okay. Well, that's good. Okay. And how about the, I mean, there's been the issues of use of the auditorium um, because of mold. Right. So at this point, we're going to wait till we get it cleaned up and then we'll start to um, work through using okay. it. Will and they the, need to be retested once, or we just need to clean it up? The report was that we could just, just clean it up. Just clean it up. It right. wasn't something that was like circulating through. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. So GW has that report now. Mm -hmm. and they'll okay. Clean. If there's no further questions, those yeah, great. Um, I don't know. I just remember going through report cards, and I was skipping home when. They were pretty good, but I was, <laughs> it took me a little while and I kind of went through the swamps and everything else when they weren't so good. But I'm just fascinated what these things might look like. And I'm wondering whether you could give us, a, you know, the next meeting or so, just kind of a, a sample of what these things. So because I, I have my sense of what it might look like. And I don't think it's our job to micromanage this, but I think it would be helpful if we all uh, that are not parents of of, uh, of uh, elementary school kids, what they might look like. So that's just a request. Um, I noticed in here that Judy Jensen, who's a wonderful artist mm -hmm. and craftsman in Rochester, is going to be joining in, in, and teaching uh, a day on the farm at Annabelle's. And um, that's, uh, you know, some history of Rochester. And in Stockbridge, Annabelle is uh, there in many many ways, and I just think that's just neat to tap talent in our community and bring them into the schools. I just think I love that. Um, and a question, um, uh, we read in the Herald that we're going to have a, a basketball program out of the Rochester gym. Isn't it wonderful yeah. to have a gym <laughs> facilitated? But it wasn't clear, and I know Marilyn, my wife, asked, is it, uh, is it going to be available for Stockbridge kids? Is, and I assumed it was. We're yeah. one... Yeah. As you get to community, but that's, yep. I think that's, that's so, you know, and the final thing is, it wasn't clear just, in the article that you read. It wasn't clear. It wasn't clear because it was, it was at the, available for, it was at the, the Rochester gym. It is. And yeah. so have you read it at Ben Only Rochester? Well, no, no. Rochester, we all share right. resources and everything else. So 
department. I thought it was combined. I, I'm not good. sure who wrote that. It's not a school oh, okay, it wasn't. article. Okay. Now it might be a yeah, Rochester. It, was it? Is it's it a Rochester? Is, is Rochester Rec this yeah. Okay. yeah. But I can let them know because there are kiddos from both campuses mm -hmm. that participate and Pat and soccer this year and, and do I, basketball yeah oh you got roped in uh <laughs> that's how rec sports are you uh, coaching <laughs> yeah but it rotated between campuses for the younger grades too soccer did yeah football, right yeah football. i did yeah I, I had them go back and forth so you're going to be undefeated this season <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's great. I think that's neat. It, it also speaks to the importance of having that facility. Yeah. yeah. My daughter it's a community basketball. facility. Yeah. Um, um, with the uh, same thing, with through Rochester Rec with Stockbridge students. Yeah. It was great. It was yeah. it, they enjoyed I mean, it. to be able to offer that exposure to the, young, yeah. the younger kids. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. And the, the last thing I just wanted to mention, going back, uh, Jamie mentioned and, and Lindy, you did too, about direct instruction. Um, I think we've been blessed, uh, a former school board member of the Stockbridge School Board was Jamie Point. Jamie is, if you're aware of it, and she's not shy, but um, you should be aware, she's one of the national experts on direct instruction. And um, so that we have that resource and we've got the leadership here from the superintendent to um, our director of academics to our principal to our teachers um, teaming up on this initiative and I just like to make a couple comments one is it's to me it's a reaction to to nationwide COVID and other things have really done a job on our educational outcomes for our uh, students at all levels. And if you look at those test results at grade eight and everything else there, some people might just think it's, there's no hope. Well, there is hope, but I'd like to suggest that this school district of the leadership of Lindy and his teachers, uh, because this is something new. How, how are we gonna do, deal with this? How are we gonna turn the page? How are we gonna catch up with those sloths? Uh, is there anything we can do that we haven't done. All those questions seem to me were being asked and driven and probed. And what I've read about direct instruction is, is quite positive, but it takes an organization willing to take that risk because something new is different. Something new means more work. And something new is, I'm not sure I, um, all those things have to be overcome as a team to say it's worth it. And we're not gonna take um, the, the difficulties in educational outcomes in the United States of America, we're going to try to beat that. We're going to try to overcome that, and we're going to do it the best we can as soon as we can. And um, from somebody who's been in a lot of organization, that's a sound, a, a sign of a sound, healthy organization from top to bottom together, figuring out what needs to be done and then going after it. Um, so I just want to commend um, the whole team effort and the, and, the, and the teachers. We'll see what the results are going down the road. Nobody absolutely knows yet. Um, but I'm heartened that, that we're not waiting. We're not sitting in our hands. We're not, you know, and it's just awful. We're doing something. And that's, that's very impressive to me. So I just wanted to congratulate you. Yes, thanks. Mm -hmm. that up. Yeah. Uh, Robert? Oh, uh, just a minor thing. Um, has, uh, has there been any thoughts to uh, pickleball in the... So I've left a waste of, we're not going to paint the gym floor, but there's other ways to do it. Okay. I've, which is usually tape. Right. You put tape down. But she and I are playing phone check. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the honest answer. I think she was out of town for the holiday. And yeah. Went back and forth. Okay. I was like, I did we played phone tag a couple times now. Pickleball is so much fun. It is fun. That's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it was my new uh, uh, fall uh, that I learned it this fall, and I was very excited. <laughs> oh, I, it's, so I enjoy this one. So, and I think it would be interesting to show the kids, too. So. Yeah. They've uh, been playing. I have they? They play outside. Oh, excellent. And both. And, and they play. They, um, and then they've been going to the tennis courts in Rochester, and both groups went over to. <clears throat> is there attachments to set up tennis? Um, not at the basketball court or no? Here currently. Yeah, in Rochester. 
No, no. they walk no. the path over to the. Got I you. do know what you're talking about, yeah. but yeah. yeah. There is a pop up one that you can do in that blue oh, for PD gotcha. class. It's okay. like a pop up map. Okay. Very nice. All right. Uh, is there any further questions for our principal? All right. We'll move on to the business manager's report. Tara, are you available? Mm -hmm. Good evening, everyone. You have my report, which outlines all of the projects that we are working on here in the business office for the month of December. Uh, if there's any questions, I will happily answer them. And otherwise, I'll come back on when you get to your budget. And Tara, just so they know, I can't, I can't remember if it's in your report. They'll have a, they should have a draft of their audit by January. Yes. Okay, is there any questions on this um, business manager's report? Uh, moving on to policy committee review of policy C28, transgender and gender non-performing students. Uh, I believe this was, um, was something that um, Ethan had advised us to take a look at um, as a board. Uh, to, if, one wondering what, if we had a policy, and, and we do indeed, that has been adopted. Um, uh, <clears throat> any comments on it? Does the administration see any needs for upgrades or changes? On it? Seems pretty comprehensive. Yeah, yeah I feel good about it. Yeah. I mean. I think in general, the one thing that we're doing is at the admin level reviewing and making certain that our facilities support this policy. Um, but I, I think it's a really sound policy. I also think it it does a good job about talking about the safety of all students, and I, I appreciate that. So you know, I feel like it, it's a good tool. Right. Um, are there any lessons to be learned from what's been happening over in Randall? You know, I, I don't want to get into the. You know, I, 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 yeah, I don't want to get into the details about what the, maybe what, why that got to where it's gotten. But I would, you know, I would say to you that that this policy I think gives us the tools to have to be able to navigate that in a way that um, I think some of the concerns that have been raised in Randolph maybe we wouldn't have. Uh, had those concerns or received those and and we certainly have transgender youth in our buildings and i'm not hearing of concerns from any of my parents about the use of facilities um, or changing rooms or things of that nature um, and this has certainly been a um, conversation that's been had at the white river unified district um, at uh, several meetings, and I have not heard from um, any parents specific with concerns around um, safety of any of our students or, or I'm feeling uncomfortable. Great. I just, um, just a couple of comments here. Um, first, it's great to have a policy so we're not flying blind. Secondly, when we, I look at the, the policy and it, if this is, is on safety and it's on, privacy and it's privacy for all students and so some people think well it's just no it's not just it's all and I think the power of this policy has is underlined by that word all um, and then um, any student expresses a need or desire for increased privacy so and so and um, it's just uh, it's heartening that we have a policy, we have guidance, and that we're, we believe, and um, so that we're able to protect all our students. I did read an article, I can't remember where it's from, about the crisis of student mental health is much vaster than we realize. Mm -hmm. And the statistics are just, um, the Secretary of Education calls it a national state of emergency. And when we're talking about the impacts of nearly 45% of high school students who are so persistently sad or hopeless, and one in five seriously consider suicide, 9% of teenagers surveyed um, trying to take their lives, 
And then it said a, a substantially larger percentage of gay, lesbian, bisexual, and other questioning students reported a suicide attempts. So this is, uh, wow. I mean, it's, so it's, it's heartening that we've got a policy, we've got a program, we've got leadership, we've got uh, a structure um, that can manage that and take and protect our students. Um, and I'd like to recommend um, through the chair that each month we have another policy that we just uh, read and reaffirm. Uh, we're not this policy committee. Patrick's our representative on the policy committee, but we can just kind of keep up to date. There's so many policies. <laughs> Um, at least for me, it helps if I do it in small bites. So I don't know if anybody has a suggestion or Patrick, you want us to lead us on a, a, a policy for next month, but that's my idea. Hmm. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a good idea to review a policy. Yeah, give us a, a reading list. Okay. Yeah, I agree. And I can access that in the drive, right? So, uh, did policy. you get this really nice? Um, they were sent you. Um, yeah, really cool an Excel document. sheet yeah, that has that. them all yeah. out on yeah. it. So, there, um, do you want, uh, since you are on the policy committee, do you want to steer us in? in I mean, do we want to just go right down the list and just review mm -hmm. each one? So we do one one. I definitely I say one a time is all we should yeah should exactly write off yeah you know? yeah. <laughs> but, but you might prioritize it on the ones that are more okay yeah. controversial okay yeah yeah so we're agree. prepared. Um, yeah, on the website we break them down in, in subgroups. Mm -hmm. So like all of our policies with C are focused on the our implementation around students. Mm -hmm. And so okay. when you go to the website under under the SU, you'll see under board policies. Yeah. And then it's it's right here. Thank you. Okay. So you got board operation policies, personnel policies, student policies, okay. construction policies. Okay. So we, we break those down in those subgroups. So okay. if you want to look, this comes yeah. out of student policy. Um, you know, and it you know, you're in the business of students like us, right? Maybe it, we focus on that well, first. That could yeah. possibly be yeah. Yeah. So you no, I'm gonna, I'll look through all of them and then I can kind of develop a list what, what we can go over first. Okay. The board operation policies are I'm trying to have that those be um, all topics within the new mentor mentee program that as they're building their handbook. Okay. That there's a flavor of a policy that they're reviewing each time. Okay. Okay. Great. Cool. Um, eight five, full board update. White room dry SU board update. Um, <clears throat> Bill, you want to take it? Um, are we doing with SU spot? SU, yeah, SU full board updates. Who who are our representatives now? Bill. Wasn't it Amy? Okay. And we'll have to appoint one. Yeah. No. Voting number. Let me hide. We can do that next month. Too. Okay. Well, the big thing we had last meeting was um, a petition that was signed by a resident um, of the White River Valley um, in my district uh, complaining about a board member uh, behavior that violated uh, our conflict of interest policy and we have a conflict of interest policy and we might look at that again and um, so we spent a lot of time looking at um, the policy and then also the complaint and then uh, the response from the board member that the complaint was aimed at and uh, uh, at the end of the discussion um, question and answer, um, the SU board voted unanimously that the complaint did not reach a threshold of being constitute a conflict of interest. Um, subsequent to that point uh, time, the district board voted unanimously with the same conclusion. Um, I think there were um, feelings that while there was no conflict of interest, and I really believe a company like this is the financial you know i've got money in the hand and i'm hiding that um my hand in your pocket and uh nobody knows about it uh, but we are talking about um 
communication, civility, um, working in partnership with the community. We're a body of the community. Um, and I believe that the SU board will be pursuing that either at the policy committee uh, level. And I have a suggestion and I was, I was making now that, um, that it might be something that's quicker and easier, not a replacement of that policy, but to have the SU board and the other district boards adopt um, board principles and protocols like we have. It doesn't require going out and having a public hearing and all this sort of stuff, but it does speak to how we're supposed to behave, what are important things that we are supposed to focus on. And I happen to believe that um, um, most protocols speak to how we communicate. And in fact, we'll talk about that a little bit tonight because we're going to kind of do our scorecard. I think the mentorship um, too will help. But I think we all believe that, that we, um, it's important people, there's, a, and uh, read chapter two as we've done, and there's some interesting stuff about what people hear. And uh, it's not necessarily what we say. So I'll leave it at that. Um, and then there's also, um, we're um, getting ready to negotiate with the, uh, educational special educators um, and that process will will move ahead over the next uh, few months. Uh, I don't know, uh, Jamie, have I missed anything? No, I mean the full board got its second draft of the budget, which um, the operating expenses of the SU, the SU expenses and special ed expenses are going to be up um, certainly less than a percentage, it's almost flat. Um, we continue to be able to incur some savings in special education, um, not by anything other than the fact that we're seeing um, less need for um, students to have to access out of district placements, which is why we built alternative programming um, across the grades. This, the SU had it in place for grades um, at the elementary and middle school prior to my tenure, we added nine through 12 program last year. Um, and so we're finding that we're be a better able to meet our SU um, students needs at our alternative programming at the high school. And that programming is serving kids in all of our towns. Um, and it's you know often the least restrictive environment for our students within the SU to be able to access that programming within the high school and it's, it's set up that it really is programming. That's why I use that word. It is not a situation where students are housed in a classroom throughout the day. They are accessing courses in and out of their, um, their home base um, within the personalized learning classroom is what it's called. Yeah, that's great. Um, so, um, and we've got lots of students who are also using it as a safe place for themselves. So it's, it's got a, a few of it, it's a classroom like any of our other classrooms within the building. Um, and so that's resulted in us being that actually, I mean, we were able to reduce a couple paraprofessionals within that budget, but also invest in another full-time special educator. Um, and that budget is supporting an additional 504 coordinator for the SU. It's an area um, that I would say that we saw of, of needing growth is our management and implementation of 504 plans. Um, and so we'll have a coordinator who is working with our special educators. Our special educators at the elementary level are now case managing 504s. We've been able to get up to enough special educators where they have the capacity to do some case management of 504 plans um, as well as IEPs. Um, and But we are looking to add a 504 case manager who will specifically be focused on middle high school level because um, we're still responsible for 504 uh, plans after they leave our building. We're still the LEA. So meaning if we have a student who goes to Woodstock or a student that goes to Middlebury or a student goes to Weber Valley, Rochester, Stockbridge, Unified District is still the LEA of that 504, just like we are of the IEP. So having a coordinator that's there making certain that we're still following um, our students' plans it is important. So that, that SU budget supports that too. Great. All right, uh, any more updates or we'll move on to 
Uh, building facility and task force update. Uh, we met uh, last Tuesday. Last Tuesday it was with um, EEI uh, with Eric. Eric, Eric, thank you, Eric from EEI. Uh, uh, myself and Pat and Robert uh, were there uh, with a walkthrough of the elementary building um, and really saw visually what the plans are there, and we're able to really talk to him about, um, you know, specifically the, the different plans. I really valued it because I, I am a very visual person, so for me to actually see um, how the changes are going to happen are, are huge. Um, I'm pretty excited about the project. I mean, I think we're really going in the right direction. Um, we're talking about the um, pellet stove being a, a carbon neutral um, option. option. I mean, that's wow. that's really exciting. So um, I, I'm encouraged and. And uh, you know, excited about doing this. I don't know if you have um, any more to add, or if there's any questions. I think where did we leave it? I think Eric was going to get us um, pricing to review, yep. and then I think we were talking about review yes. reviewing yes. it as as uh, a committee, yep. and then we'll we'll review it together with the school board. Right. The next meeting was it the next meeting or was it going to be no, the we're fall? A special meeting? Yeah, we're going to exactly. But was that going to fall between now and the next meeting, or was it the no, next? I meeting? think you're going to meet as a committee after your January meeting. Gotcha. Okay. And then once we've done that piece, we're in a special meeting. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Great, yeah. uh, Robert. I think he um, did a good job of explaining the function of the heating system in an understandable fashion. We're we're not going to be carbon neutral, I mean, it's when we're running out of the park, the, the pellet stove, we will, but there's swing, there's times, the pellet stove operates, it will operate most efficiently when it's very cold, but at times when you just need some heat, it'll be primarily on L, LP gas, which is not, but we won't be heating that much. So. Right. Mm -hmm. it, uh, the analogy of like your house, if you have a wood stove in your house, in, in the spring and in the fall, you're using maybe your electric or your, your propane mm -hmm. heat. But in the winter, you're getting that winter. Once you turn that winter stove on, you're you're. I it's keep on. the radiant nice and toasty, but I also keep the wood stove. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> excellent. But yeah, so we'll we will be looking at um, more detailed um, information on cost uh, and everything, and then to be able to uh, bring that back to the full board. Um, so we can make a final decision on it, um, probably in January. Yeah. So that's great news. Yeah. Okay. Um, draft three of the budget. Yep. Uh, so you have draft three of the budget. So what that includes is what you, you first saw, like student support services, is one budget. Then and the recommendations there. Then you saw uh, like instructional staff last time. And now this is everything uh, line item wise and Tara and I have gone through it together. It is at over a 5% increase. Um, what I will highlight, and there's a couple things like we don't have our bond payment anymore. We're officially paid off, but we did put that in there with the idea that we can fund transfer that towards capital improvements. Oh and or use it towards our EDI work to not have to drain down those accounts that you guys set up. I think that's very, very good. That's something Bill has talked about is for us to, to budget right. for capital improvements. And so it's nice to see that we put mm -hmm. that in there. Um, some other line items, sorry, I'm going backwards. That's probably not smart. Uh, <laughs> but if you do look at, uh, like I said, I'm going backwards. Operation of building on Page six. These are the page numbers, Tara. <laughs> and, and the date. And the date. Yes, I agree. <laughs> uh, one of the things that we did go through pretty with a pretty fine tooth comb is specifically around, and it's going to be on the next page. It is on the next page. Sorry, page seven. You flip over specifically around repairs and maintenance. Uh, you'll see that increase. There are other projects that I've put in for besides the EEI work. For example, all the exterior doors in this front part of the building in Stockbridge, other than the main entrance, need to be replaced. Um, 
they're warped. They don't secure. So well, this, you know what you want to <laughs> So I have a rough <laughs> estimate, but yes, I would like to. So this um, line item. Uh, includes EEI or does not include, does not this include is a separate EEI. Okay. Sorry, the 911 line item at the very wow, that's a weird yeah, uh, 911. That's the capital. <laughs> yeah, so the EEI. The EEI. This is separate from the EEI. <laughs> I didn't realize that until I said it out loud. Okay. Uh, it, so it includes that it includes new classroom lines in all the classrooms in Rochester because those need to be replaced. It includes. Um, replacing the siding down here in the multi-purpose room that's pretty much dry rotted. Um, yeah. So it includes some projects that we don't necessarily need to go through quite the process of EI, but are definitely some um, building and maintenance projects that have been pushed mm -hmm. over the past couple of years. So that um, is a line item that went up. And then we also did... Um, budget accordingly based on our fuel oil usage right tara which is line item 624. um right and of course we won't be using as much fuel but we'll use pellets right so, so it's and some of the efficiency that we say will go toward paying that lease payment so right. over time that line will adjust but we don't have that dialed in yet at this moment right because hopefully we will not be buying oil in that's budget, but we need that. We still need to buy fuel. And also Whatever yes. type of fuel it is. And pay for it. Yeah. Okay. Remember, um, they're going to guarantee us so savings. Yes. Yeah. So, so. And then, but we don't just remove that savings out of the budget. That right. savings is going to go toward the lease payment. Right. right. Okay. So that's why it's all kind of in there, as okay. well as uh, being honest about the fact that we don't know the status of the high school and the fuel okay. oil and that. Right. Uh, so we give budget for that, and and I mean the project hasn't started yet, so there's all kinds that we right. Got. So it's realistic. It's, it's, and those are part of the hard numbers the committee needs, right? Like yeah. we need to see what's the lease payment going to be, right? What's their guarantee back on the savings? So mm -hmm. the good news is we're not adopting your budget in January. Right. I got a few other districts we're going to, right? So that's mm -hmm. we're we're doing our best work around estimation but yours will have it a little more dialed in i know that is one of the nice things about waiting a little bit longer is we do have more final numbers on a lot of things yeah. tuitions mm -hmm. um right all those yeah the yield yeah all that so um that is definitely an area that's probably increased the most but it's based on actual numbers okay. i would say and okay. what we've actually spent in operations as well as thinking about under those repairs and maintenance other projects that need to be done. Another example of what's in there is also the grease trap in Rochester needs to be replaced. Okay. So all those are based on quotes that we acquired in this process. Mm -hmm. okay. So like I said, I'm going backwards. That was a big thing. I didn't want to forget all those projects. <laughs> Do you read my exams backwards? Uh, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it is a little. It's okay. Unorthodox. Um, after that, for the most part, everything is pretty close to the same. We did increase uh, supplies under general elementary, um, as well as some field turf funds, just to be realistic to the inflation of other things that have been happening around to make sure teachers can get what they need. And um, transportation has gone up a little bit on those field trips. So we want to make sure that we're not taking away opportunities from kiddos because of that. And um, and then we did up the library books as well a little bit uh, because the Rochester library really has been hoed out and looks amazing, but there are kid requests around yeah. books. So we do want to make sure that we're meeting that. And both of our upper grade classroom libraries could use some updating. So that's in um, elementary. Is Just that a lot? Start the process. Is that library supplies? Uh, the, the books is that you, you just said it's for the library and for libraries in classrooms or or it's is it two, two separate, separate lines? lines? Yep. So it's yeah. library books is the one for the actual library. 641. Yep. 641. Yep. And then the um, and if you go to the 1100, 1101 section, so the front page, page one, and you go to 641 again, you'll see an increase in books and periodicals. Um, as well. Yep, and that's for the classroom libraries. Yeah. Yep. Great.
Yeah. And you told them that the library was increased in this budget. Oh, uh, I did not. Um, it is increased in this budget. So if you go to twenty two twenty twenty two twenty one, on page four, it does include uh, last time you guys talked about increasing that to point six. Um, Which, so it's at two. Yep, and it's currently at point two, uh, four or point two? Point four. Point four. Point two in each campus. Point two in red. So yep. this to be uh, right. Point three. Where was this? Page four. <laughs> I know it doesn't work. Probably not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um. Page. Yeah. Down there. Yep. Because point two is. Just a one full, day, full one day. Full day. Yeah. Just for general reference. Yeah. I think like two days. Yeah. <laughs> and then I would say the only thing on page one, I just want to point out it, on 1101, where it says uh, 131 line item overtime set salary, that really means substitute. Overtime salary. Mm -hmm. 131 overtime yeah salary. right that is where we um put an increase in for sub the substitute kids just then. want to really learn they stay late <laughs> Some of them would. a majority of them would actually yeah which is great but <laughs> just don't want that to be confusing to kids. <laughs> who are we paying that much overtime to or, or not okay so, that's, so that is substitutes okay. yeah so uh, on 1101, yeah. uh, line item 111, it's it's down um, about $7,500. So is that a diminution of, of service or um, opportunity, or is it efficiencies? Are we consolidated and doing more efficient? What's going on there? That's, that's your on. actual staffing versus what we would have budgeted for. Right. Okay. And that actual staffing is what Not we a change need. in FT. We yeah. need that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So it's um, yeah. you got to let us know if the actual is not enough. That's actually not what you actually have now. Right. It's what we budgeted for this current school year, but it's not the staffing structure that we have currently in Rochester because I wasn't able to replace a teacher that resigned um, late right. summer. So, um, so this is, assumes we're going to get that teacher back yeah. or a right. teacher back. A teacher so. back. We do need to go back to another um we just need to break up some of the primary grades a little differently in rochester next year yep okay. so we will uh we've already begun talking configurations there so we can post early yep great so and then it keeps so it, it keeps the classroom staffing the same in both campuses as originally budgeted for Are we anticipating changes in, in student population? Um, it's be flat? It, probably pretty close to status quo. Um, there'll be the kindergarten class in Rochester next year will be projected a couple kiddos higher than what it is currently. Um, and here in Stockbridge, it'll also be I think it's about five or six next year. Really so well. About five to six. Oh, uh, well, just total. 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 So essentially, it'll replace the same number of kiddos that move on from sixth grade. So it's, it's it'll keep it'll stay pretty close to the same. We like that building blocks. They're here with K and one, and yeah, yeah. The tendency will be they'll stay with us, and yes. hopefully all the way through right. our flagship. So. I don't want to get off the top, but I have a question for you. Yeah. Is, um, uh, you're dealing with it. Is, is, you know, we dealt with the merge. Right. Huge. But now, do you think what, how we're operating now, separate campuses, mm -hmm. do you think it long term it will, it will be effective and efficient? Or do you think at some point we will have to consider as a board? merging grades still maintaining say two campuses but having okay. you know just say pre-k maintain maintained at both campuses yep one through three or, or kindergarten through three here right four through six in rochester or mm -hmm. something like that do you 
I think we that, need to have. And do you think that if that was something that we did, that they that we would be able to get more out of it? Um, real quick. Yes. Go. So part of the decoupling vote was over this conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just so you know, yeah. So yeah, this conversation was being had, and there were real concerns from the Stockbridge community about the merging of grades. So mm -hmm. I would say that that is something we were going to explore again. There would need to be a lot of community conversation. Absolutely, I'm not yeah. saying that at all. I, and yeah, I would say I definitely went on the record in front of the select board in Stockbridge when that was being held and said we would not entertain that any time in the near future. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I just want to put that out there. Yeah, yeah, there. No, absolutely. I, I, just, I, I try to be a person idea. of my word. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I definitely said, we've heard folks, we heard the concerns. Mm -hmm. As the superintendent, I wouldn't be advocating for that anytime in the near future based on the concerns we heard. Amy yeah. was there with me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that Amy was the only one on the board at that time that's here. Justine probably had just come on. Yeah. but. There was a background, and I would say one of the concerns, absolutely the high school building, but I do believe another of the big concerns was us mm -hmm. contemplating that conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At least that's how I, I remember. I totally agree, and I uh, think that that kind of speaks to Yeah, to I that. don't disagree. I'm not saying that that's what I would want to do at all, but I just want to make sure that what we are doing is sustainable and not too much of a burden on the staff. For people like yourself, where there's multiple staff members that are. Yeah, that's a, you know, um, there are multiple multiple of us that are back and forth. And that's just finding your rhythm and yeah. your people. Now mm -hmm. if now if my team were to change on me, Miss Janet, I'm looking at you <laughs> over there on the screen <laughs> and Miss Erica, I cannot do it without them. Um, then it would take some adjustment, but um, I'm really, really confident in the fact that we've spent a lot of professional development time around our students' social emotional needs and how to implement that successfully. And that has made my job very easy. Teachers know what they're doing. I feel very confident in what's going on in all our classrooms. I, we are always looking for opportunities to get our kiddos on both campuses together more because we mm -hmm. as a staff, a collective staff between both groups do a lot together. Like we look at academic yeah. data together. I don't break it out by buildings because yeah. it's all our students and we're looking at that. And so I think as we build that culture, maybe the conversation will come up again, but they also just like being like, it's so tough because kids haven't been able to socialize with other kids. Well, I was just going to say, I think, so I think so that's just great for their to, growth anyway, yeah, to be outside socialize. of their bubble and yeah. meeting new kids. So and, I think yeah. there's also ways as we start to move into this Friday enrichment block that we'll start to do stuff together. We're going to do mm -hmm. winter wellness together. Uh, we're going to do some book clubs together and some cross -campus, campus academic stuff together. And once that starts, I think the sky's the limit. Yeah, so I'm excited about those things. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Great. Yes, Robert. Uh, just a comment that you know, ultimately, when conversations do come up about essentially consolidating into the into you know single grades from both campuses, the to me the largest the the, the most important criteria is is this best for the kids? So, and and I see that there's going to be pluses and minuses right. both ways for the kids. Um, but there's you know increased transportation, there's more difficulty of having the parents involved and such if you did make the kids I think um, so that's it's it's going to be a complicated discussion. I, I just will say again and I, I said it when we were going through the decoupling revo, my job is to make decisions that result in kid successes. And right now, we're, I still feel confident about 95% of the time. Sometimes I'm not, I know I'm not right, but that we're doing that. Yes. And if we aren't, then we need to have a different type of conversation. Great. And, and I think we have and are doing amazing things in the structure that we have. We have been able to do quite a bit. And um, I think you're doing a really good job with, with that. So. Yeah, and another measure was uh, the promise of Act 46 was consolidation, and it's better for the kids, and it's also better for the taxpayers. And 
when you look at what we've done here, I think that we've done that yeah. through consolidation, mm -hmm. uh, both for the kids and for the taxpayers. And the, the numbers I run, you get sick and tired of looking at my spreadsheet, but two thirds of our community pay by the, not their property values, but by their income. And you can see those efficiencies, those gains that we've been able to do. Our educational team has done. So it isn't like we're marching up, 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 and we just can't take another step. I mean, it's just impossible. And that's in some people's minds. No, uh, you look at the record since the, the merger, it's been flat or slightly down for well, at least those four, uh, two thirds. And the other one third, it's been it's up like a percent or, or less than a percent. So we're doing well. And as long as we can do that, that, that that's in both outcomes and taxpayer um, impact, we're, I think we're doing our jobs yeah. quite And well. I know you, you, you talk about, you know, making sure that it's about the kids, but when it comes to say the staff, do you would ever witness any difficulties or stresses from them having to teach say math to mm -hmm. Multi-age. Multi-age, and, and, and I only ask that because within that grade, there's a spectrum. Right. And now you're you're talking about a spectrum between two grade levels. Can, is that sometimes a challenge for them, um, or are they? I would say that bad? that would be what we have mm -hmm. spent a majority of our professional development as we've implemented bridges within the math. Math's a great example. Yeah. Um, within the math classroom, because it is two grade levels that you're looking at, but teachers have taken the time. With and Bonnie has been a great math coach around that on how to what you take what year and really getting ourselves yeah. on a two year cycle, and we're seeing it already pay off. So I think it's hard. I think it's frustrating. I will um, say high school teachers do that a lot where they teach multiple grades. So yeah, it's not yeah. quite as uncommon, it's not quite as common in elementary. It's also why we've gone to content-based instruction in our older grades. So there's one teacher that's teaching math four yeah. through six, and there's one teacher teaching letters four yeah. through six, because that helps alleviate some of that stress. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes a lot of okay. sense. Great. Yeah. Right. So, great yeah thanks for explaining that. Yeah. I also think our teachers know what they're applying to. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Part of the interview process is, is this a fit? And yeah. Certainly when they get to me. Absolutely. Right? My whole conversation is about fit. Mm -hmm. And I'm really transparent about beliefs and what we need. And I, for your schools, I also hone in on multi-age belief around teaching and teaching in small schools because that's, Takes the job is different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It just is. Oh, absolutely. And so mm -hmm. what I would say is that I think uh, your staff, Lindy's done a great job of building a team that values that, meaning multi-age, small school um, practices. And I would say for some folks, that's not, that's not what is it's their daily work, like, right? Like yeah. that's not, that doesn't fit with what they see themselves as an educator. But I would say that in regards to um, your staff and, and, I probably shouldn't even say it because it would jinx us, but um, <laughs> your retention of staff has been really good since I've been here yeah. in your district. There was some turnover a few years ago, but we brought everyone back this year, and I, I'm feeling really good about the team moving forward. Um, so I would say that, you know, in general, your folks were hired and are in this knowing what they were in. I mean, that speaks a lot to what you're saying, that there's not a lot of turnover, so it's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, to me, that says it's worth Credit to the, yeah. to the team that, yeah. uh, boy, we've all been there where we don't like, <laughs> for whatever reason, we're not comfortable, we don't right. like, we don't appreciate, we don't value whatever the case is, and we move on when we can. So um, a credit again to our mm -hmm. The um, just so I, I would say to the board, this is certainly, um, I think when, when people look at budgets, they do a few things. They either go to the tax rate, I mean our citizens, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. They vote by going to the tax rate, yeah. which we haven't even done the revenue side yet, right? And we just got the preliminary yield projections. 
Um, Which changes everything. Those that calculations everything. make it. I think there are some people that just look at the bottom line expenditures and they don't understand the tax rate. <laughs> yeah. Right. Look at it like um, that. Even though we try to really break it down and they just vote off of that. Um, this is certainly the highest, if you look at percentage, that we've had in a while. But I think it's really important um, as a board as we get into moving toward approval um, for you guys in February that you're feeling really good about a bottom line. And I do believe, even though that this is up more than we've had in a while, there is a real investment here to uphold the programming you have and put some investment back into your infrastructure at both yeah. campuses. And I would tell you that is a, from where I sit as the superintendent for your district, that is, my, if, if you said, Jamie, what's one of the things that keeps you up at our at night? It is our lack of investment in our infrastructure. Mm -hmm. um, it's really, it bothers me um, because I do think, I mean, just our walk around yeah. Yeah, was worrisome to me. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, um, yeah. I, and I, you know what I, I I think we know about um, Vermonters in general is I've always found folks to be really reasonable about, about the importance of putting money away mm -hmm. and investing in infrastructure. Um, and so I feel good about those increases, and I think we need them. And I think it was a perfect opportune time with the bond coming off the budget to start putting that money into a capital improvement fund. I just think we have to explain that to everybody, right? right? Like, mm -hmm. yes, you see 5.7%, but 65,000 of that's going into a transfer into a, a rainy day fund, meaning, right. you know, a capital improvement fund, <laughs> right. so that we can get on this preventative maintenance plan of replacing We're our planning roofs. For it. Yes. Now. We're planning so We're not that. coming to you for a bond. So that number that you guys five, came yes. up with, Lindy, mm -hmm. Now, Which obviously number? that, are you are you six, I'm sorry, yeah, the, yeah uh, 431, right? The repairs, the repairs and maintenance. And maintenance. Oh, yeah. So, oh, that's not what I was talking about. In addition to that, and, and I think Lindy started it. If you look at the last line. Last line, there's nine, a phone transfer. transfer. Oh, gotcha. you. So I'm we're, sorry. We're actually okay. asking to, to, we're putting money into the budget to be able to move it directly into a into there into a capital oh, fund great. account. So, so we have that in there as well as the additional operations. So if okay. you look here where it says uh, debt service long term redemption, yes. principal, that was the bond, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We've paid the bond off. We've made our last payment actually. Okay. And now we've taken that same amount that we were paying for the bond. Okay. And we're moving it to this fund okay. transfer. Okay. Yeah, which... I guess uh, where I wanted to go with that too, though, was, all right, so you, obviously you have an idea of things that need to be done this next mm -hmm. year. So do we want to set up a time for you to sit down with with the um, committee um, to kind of wrap our heads around that and then I know I've been itching to do like a walk around, say, with you sure. and, and Jamie and Lyle, whoever makes sense, to really figure out, make a list of everything that needs to be done and then prioritize what needs mm -hmm. to be done. That way we can go into each each year with some projects, right. with some projects in mind. Which is actually And then we can start developing estimates and, and then yeah. we can get it in the schedule. I mean, what we spoke about this at our retreat as well, was yeah. to kind of come up with our long range plan. Yeah. What, are, what are we trying to get? What's our to-do list for the next, uh, in, yeah. as far as in our general, infrastructure? Yeah. We need want to do in the next five years, but by take, by um, budgeting this money, that just helps us get right, down yeah. that road a yeah. lot faster um, and less painful. Um, yeah. As we are trying to to do these improvements, mm -hmm. so, this budget yeah. will allow you to do things. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. In the past, your budgets right. didn't allow. Yeah, it has yeah. not allowed for any of that work. You right. were just depleting money from the yeah. funds. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. No, I think this is great. No, I mean the projects that I picked for this year, in addition to the work that you've already been uh, presented, were truly around safety concerns. Yeah. Right, like the exterior doors. Yep. Yeah. Need to be there are things that came up through the EIR. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and in our um, goals for the coming year, we talked about developing a, a multi-year capital plan for our campuses. So, Patrick, you're right on board on that. And I think one thing that unites us, we are down a, 
a uh, board member is our belief that we have to reinvest in our infrastructure. We just can't let it go to pot. And our towns are doing yeah, that. Like if you look at Stockbridge, uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm too old now, but I'll put that in quotes. Stockbridge has an ongoing capital program for fire engine replacement, for public works highway replacement, for road maintenance. Instead of waiting for all of a sudden you got a hundred thousand dollar vehicle, everybody goes kicking the tires. Can it last for another year? No, you put money aside. Right, we're ready uh, to go. Now yeah. we're a little different because some of the monies are just going to be too much. We're going to have to bond it. But this is sound financial management, and it's something that the town should be able to relate to because they've supported this um, strategy, financial strategy, um, as long as I can remember in, in uh, town meeting. I, the question I have is that 65000 is roughly what we're paying in the bond service. And we don't have yet a kind of a capital plan for our two campuses. But I'm questioning is, um, I'm wondering whether that just replaces debt service, okay? Is, are we ready to put some more money in? Because I'm looking at kind of a fairly level investment yearly it doesn't mean it's not going to grow for the reserve fund for capital fund and i'm wondering whether that's enough and i'm wondering whether we should be considering something like a hundred thousand which is only thirty five thousand dollars more than what we've been paying for debt service and that debt service has come down as the principles uh, that we're paying has gone down so um so are you saying are you like i like our i like our maintenance budget but i'm wondering and i'm going to ask our, our team and you and, and Robert to noogle about um, if we're talking about a kind of an ongoing reserve fund on an annual basis for capital improvements, is that enough? Um, it should we countenance more and what would you suggest? Well, it's almost like, say, $65,000. Say, you come up with a percentage, 50, 60% to be used during year the remaining to go to to remain we wouldn't look to use this during year. it wouldn't be used. it would be used for big projects so, okay so, so this is to put so away, potentially this just is keep building growing each that. year right. Right. Yeah, this is like okay. this is like we're saving up to replace a yeah. roof yeah mm -hmm. right yes it, it's those big dollar projects okay. when we want to do things like the siding we mm -hmm. budget it we mm -hmm. just did did right in the local district. So I guess what I'm saying this is, is say for, for the smaller capital projects, capital. like you're saying, do we need to know, do we want to have a sense of what we can use each year out of that, or it's not an issue? That would be the 90,000. Right, that's the, that's the repairs and maintenance. Need. Yeah, that's the annual that's maintenance and expense. Okay. okay. Now, all okay. those things are in your budget. That's okay. in there. Sure. Okay. So the annual list, I think you need, I and Patrick, you need to look at that it. and say, is there right. enough? And Robert, too. I don't, right. that's yeah, right. my bailiwick. So yeah. that's that's the annual cost. What we're talking about is building blocks oh, for, okay. for the bigger projects. A good example is the EEI project where we're getting like 90% through efficiencies, right? But we still have to kick in that 10. Still a lot. Well, that 10 could come in or yeah. 20, yeah. whatever. We've got a lot with grants. Uh, right. we got a lot with yeah. grants, but yeah. if a building block, that would be one of the uses in my mind yes. of that reserve yes. fund. Yes. So, correct. Because it's all going towards making sure this place is safe and habitable and, and, and presents the needs. Um, so, before we, um, you know, look at increasing that amount, I would like to make sure that the rest of our budget with uh, teaching our kids and the, the um, resources that we need to mm -hmm. have yeah. successful kids, are we making sure we're addressing yeah. those? So also in here is um, as we make this transition, for example, with direct instruction uh, in our literacy classrooms for phonics and decoding, that comes with coaching throughout. So it's not like the teachers will just get this training and then that's it. So there is money in there to pay for continuous Good. professional development, and that is under uh, contracted instructional services. Under 1101. Yep, under 1101 321. Yep, that's part so of that yep, that's Okay. Yep. Also, um, in supplies and books and periodicals, another reason books and periodicals went up is for, for consumables. So, math workbooks. Yep. Things like that that we have used some ASR funding for. We're starting to build in for that as well. So, those are the two. 
big ones around kid kid instruction all needs that we've been really putting this yeah get her into okay. yep and i do think that uh looking at that sixty five thousand, we probably need to, to see where EI is coming in as well before we can really make a final decision yeah. on that. Um, and I Because we may need to budget some. We might, right. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do, I'm glad we have a starting point and I think we should definitely start there and mm -hmm. let's, let's see where EI comes in um, and, and mm -hmm. consider increasing it if, if we have the ability to. Because yeah. we do still have to contribute. Right, exactly. Because right. yeah. we want to be able to, right, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yes, Robert. Oh, uh, well, Saul speaks to the fact that we really don't have a long term capital improvement, mm -hmm. improvement right. plan. We really, before we really, and it doesn't have to be done instantly, 65,000 is a good guess and starting point. But, you know, we, we really have to have a good vision of where we mm -hmm. need to go right. in both buildings. And that's, that will take some work. Right, and we do have some reports and some inspections, and we do have a lot of things that we do know about that we just need to kind of compile and get together to know, okay, in, in 10 years, we're gonna be needing to do a roof here. And mm -hmm. and so we can, like you're saying, be yeah. planning for it be, uh, with an eye towards that so we can make sure we are contributing enough mm -hmm. to be able to do what we wanna do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Great. Is there any more uh, questions on the budget? Just a couple of things. Sure. And that's why that's one of our key uh, things in our the SU strategic plan is developing that for the all our campuses. Um, um, one is that professional development. Everything I'm reading and when I'm getting excited about what you're doing is so impactful. And it looks like here we're sustaining that level and that level for professional development. That's the Friday afternoons where we're really giving content and, and substance um, that really help our teachers, that continues to be elevated. And I'm under the impression that we've got some federal help with that. And I just want to make, try to emphasize that that's an investment well worth it. We talk about brick and mortar, mm -hmm. uh, that professional development. And I like, I'm, I'm pleased that you're continuing to Yeah, do that. We, we're really looking that we, I mean, we certainly have leveraged ESSER, but in addition to that, We'll continue to leverage our title funds yeah. for that professional development. Um, all right, I've got two other things. One is um, Amy and I are, are, are talking together about um, the contributions from the trustees of public funds. I'm with Stockbridge, and we've got um, monies that are dedicated to support our schools, our school children, and Rochester does too. And um, so, that, so we still haven't, um, I guess, come to you or the board and talk about that contribution for this coming year. Stockbridge has been roughly, it's been $9,000 a year. And then we provide other sources, um, other contributions. So my, uh, it seems like we need to do that. Um, yes, uh, I'll, comment on, later. I'll comment on that. I had a wonderful meeting with Tara just earlier this yep. week. So we um, got the, the ball rolling on, on that. Um, we were able to uh, identify, you know, um, our our funds that we have, um, and we're going to start looking at uh, the financial. Um, uh, are you there, Tara? What was the? You want to say the right words? <laughs> <laughs> I want to review all of the agreements and what we can actually use, and also speak with our auditors because. Traditionally, how these types of investment programs work is that you have the interest that's earned or the profit that's earned on the investment to use. Um, they should be treated similar to how you do your reserve funds. So you as a board could say to your administration, we have X number of dollars, dollars available for this fiscal year for you to use, and then a proposal is presented, and then the board approves the exact project for the exact dollar amount, just like you do for your reserve funds. That's how those types of funds should be used. Okay. Yeah. You'll share with that once you know. Yes, uh, I, I have a, a, a summary of about the funds. Um, Tara, we were gonna look into, uh, uh, what we're going to look into is at the financial institutions, I forget. I'm going to try to reinvest one of the plans. Um, Mascoma Bank right now has a high interest 
CD that's at 3%. So one of them needs to be reinvested that hasn't really had any gain over the last several years. And then I'm also going to speak with our auditors um, on the one account that hasn't been used at all over the years and has grown in interest to find out if we can utilize that entire dollar amount or how I have to handle that because I like to make sure I follow their rules. Once we get um, really dollar amounts that are available, shall we say, then we'll be able to make a decision on how much of that we want to to use. And yes, okay. I, I think we'll be able to have that by next meeting, probably. So from, from a, uh, I can't speak for all three trustees, uh, but I our traditional amount has been 9,000. It's really up to the school board to decide how do you want to utilize that money. And so I, um, we like to, and uh, the reason we're donating it is to support the Stockbridge facility, programs, teachers, uh, everything else like that, to the extent that it could be dedicated that way so it's more transparent. Uh, we really would like that. Um, secondly is that it, um, another option that just occurred to me, we talked about capital just a few minutes ago. I don't think there's anything wrong to say that uh, you'd like to have that money as part of the Stockbridge Reserve Fund, because we've got reserve funds that are dedicated to the two schools, and then we've got a combined one, that's the 65000 whatever we decide that's going to be flexible where we want to spend it. So uh, this board has an opportunity, if you'd like to say, we'd like to keep it in basically in operations or we want to put it aside. And I'm looking to Jamie and, and Lindy for guidance on that. We don't have to make that decision. Um, you know, we basically make those votes of, uh, next next spring. Uh, but just just offered that as that is, is a flexibility. Mm -hmm. And then finally, one planet. Um, I, it's not here. So is that one it's, planet in the administrative? No, nope, it's still under is it here the. Or where is um, it? No. Sarah, do you know is right it, off the top of your head? Where it is? Uh, it's professional activity services. Yeah, contracted instructional three twenty one under on page one. Yeah. Yep. Line yep. item three twenty one. It's in there. So that is. Direct instruction and, and one, one plan. Yeah. Okay. Because the stock for trustees of public funds also contribute um, five thousand dollars for one planet here in Stockbridge. The combined. Yeah. Um, students from both communities. Yeah. Um, and um, I haven't received a request. Yes, from from your team for fiscal year 24 but um that is still a potential source of funds uh, for this budget okay. yes, so the one planet funds are paid to the one planet program so each district has a local contribution or each site has a local contribution and then uh the one planet coordinator also reaches out to the towns to request a contribution from the individual towns and then the rest of the funding for one planet is obtained through the 21st century grant that's provided through the agency of education so one right. planet does that all on its own and it's its own set so the only thing you see in this budget is the district contribution to one planet not what the town is contributing right and since 2015, Stockbridge has um, transferred those responsibilities to the trustees. And so that's where we're doing it. Thank you, Tara. Of course, we have a new one planet coordinator. So yeah. she, I just met with her Monday in part of the conversation with just that, the local town yeah. contributions and why they have certain amounts. And... Mm -hmm. Okay. There's no further questions on the budget. We'll move forward then to 9-2, board reflection and scorecard on board goals. Over. I did not print that stuff out, Bill. What? I, I'm sorry, I did not. I'm not sure. I didn't print it out. Okay, well, I've got printouts. I figured um, you would. Um, I can make copies. 
if you hand it to me, Bill. I, I, I think got he's got a copy. You got enough? Oh, okay. Thank you. This is an initiative we did, it started in 2021. You have it? I've yeah. got it. Okay. Um, and and this is almost to the day, it was Pearl Harbor Day last year, uh, our SUD board adopted these um, governance principles and operating protocols. And in the discussion of them, we talked about, because this is kind of our report card, how, what are we, what's important, how we should conduct ourselves, and then how did we do? And tonight, I suggest that um, thanks to your filling out the scorecard, we can go over that, see how we did, and then see whether we want to con co commit ourselves to these principles and protocols for the following year. Uh, ideally, it would be great to do this in September, but we've had a lot of right. um, very jam-packed um, agendas. Um, and so, the the numbers on the right are are our score sheets. In some cases, not everybody had a, a point of view, so it doesn't always add up to six. Um, but if you look at overall, it's it's very very positive, and that's heartening. It isn't. And when we discussed protocols, we weren't wrestling, we weren't debating, we weren't. This wasn't something I think we naturally felt was the right thing. As far as our core beliefs, what are the first yeah. two columns here? The 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 options were um, um, to you could rank it poorly or move it to the right, up to great or not. So that's just sure. the scale. Okay. So that so nobody ranked anything poorly. Slightly mm -hmm. one beyond that was um, protocol number ten. Uh, most of them were. Um, near great or great, and a couple were, or a couple were, answers were not sure. Um, so we're kind of reflecting on how, how do we conduct ourselves? What do we do? So uh, the principles are important. Um, establish the vision, create policies, and assure accountability. And it's our superintendent that manages the schools, and the superintendent is that and his or her team. We stay focused on student achievement. We talked about that tonight in student wellness. We govern together as a team with a common focus and purpose. Govern in a transparent, open, and accessible manner. We govern in collaboration with the superintendent and the staff. We're not on separate islands. We're not, you know, this isn't Mars and Venus. This is, we're a team. Um, and we maintain a high standard of integrity. And uh, I, the self scores are um, are there to look at, and I just ask if, if anybody has any questions or comments about our principles or how we did. I think we did well. I think that um, number two, staying stay focused on student achievement and wellness. I like that we have the celebration of learning that is a uh, standard or it's a rock on our agenda. And I really look forward to that um, in our meetings to really kind of see what's going on, mm -hmm. get a little glimpse in, into what's happening in our schools. And it's really exciting. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that we have uh, achieved that quite well. Any other comments about principles? Do we need to add or change anything at this point under principles? Are we missing something that's integral, uh, its core to what we're all about uh, as, uh, in our governance of our... Of I, our I, I was just going to say, I, I can't think of anything. This isn't... Um, in cement, <laughs> house public works guy. So it, it's changeable. So we can we can be thinking about and 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 we're uh, and expand or contract or clarify as we go on. But this kind of 
it, it sets the, the course, the rudder, so to speak, I think, for our ship. And I feel pretty good about it. You know, I'm an optimist, but. Um, well, I also think it, having these and then going back and evaluating ourselves and then sitting and, and going through a reading, I mean, it really holds us accountable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, we need to practice what we preach. Yeah. And, and, I, and I think this is one of the. It'd be nice to just see uh, about. the community's thoughts on it too. You know, I don't know if I'd want to <laughs> see that. But. No, I, I, I hear it's very forward. I hear what you're saying. Yeah. No, it's it is. You know? we, we appreciate. I mean, it's it's very easy to pat yourself on the back. <laughs> you know, but no, we definitely. What does the community that. think? You know. When it comes to these things, because well, there are people that get involved and in, in, in watch our meetings, and you know, the um, planning commission is um, having a they, our last town plan was 2015, so they're renewing the town plan, and and uh, they're having a questionnaire that's put on by uh, Survey Monkey, uh, basically um, where we need to go as a town, but also there are some some statements having to do with how we're we doing. And so what you talk about is not that far-fetched. I've done that um, to some degree in, in key places organizationally and beyond to find out how we're doing. And so to me, we do have one thing that's, to me, uh, you, uh, private sector, you house the stock market and the, the value of your stock. Here is how do we do when our budget gets... <laughs> Um, do we win? Is it tight? Do we, is it turned down? So we do have some measure, but um, that's an interesting idea we might want to pursue is whether we want to do a more uh, direct survey um, of, of parents or citizens. For and staff. Board protocols, we have 11 of them, and this is kind of like how we conduct ourselves. Um, the board will represent the needs and interests of all the students in our district. And sometimes we forget that we've got homeschool kids, but as public educators, that um, we need to make sure that our facilities and programs are available to them as well. So that's, and the other thing is that all students, it's not just, not just, but the, the bright lights, it's everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and we never forget that thrust. Uh, the board will consider the superintendent's guidance, research best practices, public input, and financial impacts in our decision making. We don't make the decision and then tell the superintendent, here it is. We do it on a consultative, collaborative basis. Individual board members don't have authority. Only the board as a collective body does. And this is a, a, a trip frequently new board members have. They kind of come in and they... Somebody asked them, well, what do you think? Well, we're going to, well, we really can't say what we're going to do. We can bring back items of concern and consideration, um, but it's the board um, that makes those decisions. And that, um, in item five, once the board has made a decision, the whole board will support it through actions and words. Um, so we're not going to advocate and then I lose and I'm going to, you know, go around bad mouthing the decision. That what we don't do as a team. Number four, the board leads by example. We agree to avoid words and actions that negatively impact an individual, our board, or the district. While we encourage debate and differing points of view, we will do it with care and respect. And I'll also switch down to number eleven, which uh, speaks to it. In other words. As individual board members, we will work to foster peaceful dialogue with members of the community and do our best to listen fully and communicate these topics to the board. And um, those are important. Um, and I think we've tried to do that. And we don't have personalities that maybe make that more of a challenge, but it's, um, I think it's important. And it looks like the scores, we've done pretty well on that. And that's, that's heartening. Six prizes of the board meeting shall only be brought forth under special circumstances. We agree to ask the board chair or vice chair to 
place an item on an upcoming agenda instead of bringing it up unexpectedly at meetings. And so we got a bright idea that we, we tell Amy, mm -hmm. hey, I'd like to have this discussed. I've got an issue about this. And, um, and that also uh, allows staff and Jamie and his team to think about it too. So they're come prepared. Um, the board will bring any of its requests or concerns regarding personnel directly to the superintendent. Board members will encourage citizens with a complaint about personnel to first bring it to the individual concern, that means teacher, whatever, if unresolved, brought to the principal, and if necessary, the superintendent. If unresolved, the complaint may be appealed to the board. So we have a process, we've got a hierarchy. Um, Long board meetings will be avoided. <laughs> yeah. and, um, and I think we've done pretty well on that. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I, well, when we when I first started and we were in the middle of the merge, they were long. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. I like that they're at five thirty now. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a little under yeah. 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 you know. Yeah. Like, Sometimes we got a little longer, but this is yeah. we've done and, and Amy, that's one of your strengths is to keep us moving. Yeah. Well, I, I just don't think you do your best thinking at 8.30, no. o'clock at night. After no. a whole day of no. well, all that you've been through, no. exactly. <laughs> exactly. So one way we do that is that we'll stick to its agenda. Issues outside the agenda will be aired and deferred without debate. Whenever appropriate to future meetings, the board will consistently practice its audience participation program. So if somebody, citizen comes in with a real issue, um, our job is to listen. We have a time for that, so this is speak and everything else. And then instead of <laughs> discussing it further or debating whatever the case is or Q&A, we set it aside so we can complete the board's agenda. Uh, this is a public meeting, but it's a meeting of the board. And so, and then we decide through the chair and the superintendent how we're gonna just address that in future meetings. Um, if you don't, then your meeting, two hour meeting thing can just go out the window. Yeah. Uh, plus we're not necessarily well prepared to address the concern right on the spot. In order to show our commitment to continuously improve our school and our board, we will participate regularly in retreats, training opportunities and listening and learning from each other and the community. And I think the the score there says that we still have some work to do. Um, to me, it's as much as possible if we can come to the meeting, have read the material ahead. So we're prepared to ask questions or comments or um, suggestions. And that's not always easy. And you got to, to me, I have to download it so I can read it. It's a, it, it helps me, but uh, that also facilitates um, a, that two hour meeting goal that we, right. that we have. And then I've already mentioned 16 minutes. Uh, I know, exactly. Um, yeah, no, this has been, this is wonderful. Yeah. It, any uh, questions or additions or uh, you want to make on the protocols or comments? I think it was done well. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. We did have one suggestion and I brought uh, a copy and that is that we need to be sharper in our utilization of executive sessions. And um, so I just, I'm gonna pass out <laughs> that. I don't so recall having, having executive a lot of executive <laughs> sessions since I've been here. Um, and maybe but, that's why the question is they're so that we're familiar not, with it. That we're so. not um, inadvertently crossing that line, but um, we don't have to discuss it now, but it just makes sense. Um, State of Vermont has very specific rules and um, as a public forum, we need to do that. And so an unforced error is the issue is not what we're talking about, but we violated the process. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and we don't wanna have those unforced errors. We might have disagreements with the public or whatever it is on, a, on an issue, but not that we're inappropriately, in this case, going into a private session when we should know. So I think that was a good suggestion. I'm just passing that on. Um, the 
if I can continue, just we established goals back in June for this this year going forward, and um, but we haven't started this school year. Kind of reaffirmed that these are the goals that we want to attend to for this school year, and so I've just printed out the goals again. And we don't have to go through every single one of them. I have one suggestion we might want to add to, but it's, I think it's, it's important for us to have an opportunity just to say, yeah, Bill, but what? Or we're missing this, or we should be doing that. And so I'm just going to pass these out. Um, and these are always, our goals are always open to, we should be doing more, we should be doing whatever the case is. But these are kind of the overriding um, and it's another way to kind of score how we're doing. Got it You've got it? Yep. Um, how are we doing on our protocols? How are we doing on fulfilling our goals? And as we just um, were discussing in the budget, so under number two, financial yeah, management, I think we're hitting number that. E, you know, we are coming up with a multi year capital plan to protect and improve the our said capital assets. So, I mean, I think that's wonderful that we hit that one already. So I think, you know, having this and reading through it and just being familiar with it so that when you come to a meeting, this is what we're, we're all about. Yeah. What our goal is. Great. Thank you, Bill. I was wondering, um, we were going to have a new board member joining us and Justine is our representative on uh, an SU board initiative, which is to establish a mentoring program and for the SU board and uh, carried through to district board to a district board. So I'm wondering one of our goals might be, sh should we have a goal, I think I wrote it down someplace, which is to implement a mentoring program for, for us. Um, and because they're doing it now and I, I think it's going to come our way, but I thought that's what the whole idea is. It's going to be the program that they're creating at the SU I see is every board's going to implement that program. So, okay, it won't be an individual board. No. Okay, so then I don't- Because I actually, that. I think, Bill, they're gonna have this conversation as a committee, but I think there's a real sense that having a men mentor from a neighboring district board could be really powerful mm -hmm. um, in the sense of you would have a mentor, but th th there wouldn't be any risk of that mentor influencing a new board member. Right. Specific right. if there's really big topics that are yeah. gonna be discussed, like a board member, a new board member could get up to date with a board member around what's been discussed in the, in the information. But as far as having a mentor, having it be from another district board so that the, the conversation doesn't go back to board business, but it really goes on, it's focused on board development, right? And just if I'm thinking about how do I find my voice at my local district board, like having another member, board member within the SU, I just think sometimes can feel even safer, right? Like mm -hmm. I can ask those questions and I'm not worried about one of my other fellow board members judging, judging. that question. Or, yeah, I think that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I do think that's the direction they're gonna try to go to. So if that's the case, by doing it that way, it really does become every district's mentor. That's program. great. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Then I don't need my uh, uh, table that idea. Um, can we go on to the book? Yes, please. I've got a 719, so I'm going to try to be quick here. Okay. Um, I hope you had a chance to read chapter two. Um, and I've taken the liberty of just kind of highlighting uh, the introduction section uh, and the first two chapters, but uh, and I'll leave these with you. Um, I found it just very revealing, chapter two, but I thought um, if one way we could do it is just to go around and if uh, board members would share an interesting point or a conclusion or a, um, a technique that you learned that you thought maybe you didn't know before or you yeah, thought it might be important for us to 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 practice um 
Yeah. You might have to skip over me. And Amy, maybe <laughs> this, I don't want to put you on the spot, but you're oh, the chair. Um, sure. Uh, so, um, what, what what struck you as is? Um, well, uh, one thing that really stood out to me um, was about it, at the end. It's about your manner, about your mannerisms. Um, you know that. Uh, 55% of what, what people are uh, understanding has to do with your body language. 38% mm -hmm. mm -hmm. has to do with your, your tone. Right. And only 7% uh, of the actual words that you're saying. That's, true. That's unbelievable. So you just speak gibberish and just be like, <laughs> <laughs> Patrick, we're safe. <laughs> right. Um, you know, and wow. I, I mean, I, I always knew that you like body language and stuff had an influence on how people uh, you know heard you but not that much yeah um so i thought that was uh, eye-opening you know um and and it, i don't I can't find it right now because it was but it was good it just has to do with um same type of thing about your um like what you intend uh, your intent versus your impact mm -hmm. Um, you know, I think that's really important like, to be mindful of. So. Patrick, things strike out uh, strike for you? I've got to admit, I forgot my book and I read it a month ago. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm a little, I should have probably read it last night. No, and, and <laughs> when honestly, if Thank I don't you. write it down, I forget. My, yeah. it's, it's a sieve. It's just kind of. Well, and um, I did, you know, at first it's a little muddy to get through but then it seems like it just opens up no i enjoyed like, it's it very too. interesting yeah. how at first it's like just seems so highly technical and like it's a, a lot but then uh, suddenly the sw switch comes on and, yeah. and it, it, yeah. it it's very readable mm -hmm. <laughs> we have another board in the su reading it right now it's okay fine. you do yeah. and how's it going well yeah Robert, anything to? Not at this point. I, I mean, I, I read through both chapters a while ago, and then it says, that's, yeah, it's, that's it's not, I but I, I mean, just, <clears throat> I did do one thing is I got an electronic copy, so I have it on my phone. <laughs> Ooh, really? <laughs> yeah. That's wow. more of my style. I mean, of the book? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so out of it. I'm so out of it. Well, see, I could just you know flip through. The other thing is, is you can do searches on. It. So uh, I'll, you can I'll, hack it. That's right. So what, you want to use it? <laughs> sorry, no, I am. Well, it's so another thing that, I, and it is part of our um, our actual uh, principles and, and protocols is. Um, about making decisions not on the firing line, you know, and I think that's really important. And um, I, I, I feel we we are doing that. Uh, you know, there has been times in the past that that was different, and I'm glad that we are able to to be well informed about what's going to happen in the meeting, to be able to think about what's that topic and to be able to do some research on it and then to be able to be fully informed when we go to make a decision and i i appreciate that we are able to do that yeah. so. just to toss uh two or three in i liked from and you know i like sports analogies um being on a board is a team sport i just love that and that being true, then all the team members have got to contribute and they contribute in different ways. They're not all the three point shooters and they're not all the super guard and everything else um, and score all the touchdowns. But we all contribute in our own way and uh, we constantly need to think about and we have it in this board. That's what I like. Um, we've got a very uh, talents and interests that serve our community well. And the third one is, and this isn't the analogy of sports, this is, I don't know what it is. Um, <laughs> trustees need to be in the helicopter. Oh, yeah. Making systems decisions, not on the firing line fighting fires. Okay. And um, that's what we constantly have to be thinking about, kind of the future, the strategy, the what's, what's gonna, what are we gonna need down the road um, so that we're prepared. Um, 
So, um, if you don't mind, I've given you as a calendar of <laughs> readings. And next, next uh, January, we're going to be talking about the superintendent and board's mindset, governance mindset. And um, thank you. So, did you revise it or is it the, it's the same one? Okay, well, I have it then. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Well, thank you, Bill, for yeah. all of, all of that work. That is wonderful. You're yeah. really pushing us to to do this important work. So, okay. On ten, uh, appoint a member to the vacant side board position. Um, so, we do have Jessica who had uh, approached me uh, with some interest. Uh, I had the pleasure of working on the Rochester board with her through um, Act 46 merger um, study committees as well. Um, and uh, you can speak for yourself, Jess, but uh, what I, we talked about um, that Ethan's, the term, the temporary, I don't know what you call it. It's the temporary- The appointment. The appointment would be from, from now until May, which is when the um, annual budget meeting and the vote is, and at that time, a, a new board member would need to be voted in by the uh, electorate. Yes. And you need to point out that that vote will be only for the remainder of, of the three years. Of the three years. Yes, and so Ethan's um, Ethan's term ends uh, FY twenty five. So that would be in two years, it's two years, like you were saying, right. yeah. So um, again, that's not a, something we're looking for, for a commitment now though, we're definitely looking through till May though. <laughs> we, we have, have uh, till May to twist your arm to keep on going. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Matter do you want me to speak? Please, yes. You can hear me okay? All right. Um, well, for those that don't know me, I'm Jess Arsenault. Um, Bill, I, my husband painted your house. You you know him and our kids. Um, oh. I'm from Rochester. Um, I went to Rochester High School. I graduated with Amy. Um, I have two children. Addison is a sixth grader at Rochester. She is home with COVID right now, which is why I'm not with you in person. Um, so if um, things do go this way, I will be there next time. Um, Aiden, my son, is an eighth grader in Randolph. I work in Rochester at Inner Traditions um, Publishing Company right on the park for 22 years now. I'm a special sales export manager. I'm also a lister for the town. And as Amy noted, I do have some board experience. I was on the board um, during some pretty turbulent times for Act 46. I was in study committees lots of merger meetings and um, I, I just had to bow out and let some fresh um, you know, bodies uh, take over for that part of it. Um, I've been very impressed with what's been going on with the school and the unified district. And um, when I heard Ethan had uh, resigned, um, I spoke to Amy briefly. I did not see um, the ad in the paper, but if you want me to write something formal for the board, I can do that. Um, but if you are interested in discussing and appointing me tonight, I'm, I'm ready to join. I'm happy to help, um, you know, just get through May um, as a, you know, a board member with some experience. I, I can hit the ground running for you. And um, I probably will make a decision closer to May whether I decide to rerun to finish Ethan's term. Okay. Great. Uh, entertain a motion. That's well entertain a motion to appoint Jessica Arsenal as um, into the vacant spot on what's the, what's on the board for, as the Ro Rochester rep as the Rochester rep is the vacant a, position on the Ro Rochester Stockbridge on the Rochester nice old move second you got that part going <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, I know that sometimes they have to be like really specific. Yeah. Right. It's, it's, you know you got it it's Rochester okay. um, all right excellent all in favor all, right. Aye. Aye. all opposed excellent welcome to our board Jess welcome good to be back okay. <laughs> so to the official you have to go down to the town clerk to get sworn in okay and as soon as you do that, Jess, just um, most of the time the clerks are good about emailing 
Christy White. Mm -hmm. um, but also just shoot us an email because okay. uh, I want to get I want to get you set up sooner rather than later with SU email. Um, okay. Now just I've got some documents um, that I can share with you around some policies we've developed since you've been on. Um, mm -hmm. That could be helpful. But yeah, I'm trying to get up to speed. But anything you can provide to help, that'd be great. <laughs> okay. Um, W four, does she have to fill out W fours? I yeah, Tara will there. connect with her on that on all that stuff. <laughs> I still have to do that. Yeah, I, 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 you guys I just gave you <laughs> yeah. W fours. So. <laughs> Jessica, I'll get you a book. <laughs> Thank you. So, okay, great. <laughs> so yeah, uh, connect with it would be Tara. Tara will reach out to her. Right. Okay. Well, she yeah, she reached out to me and. I, <laughs> yes, I am going to be getting a reminder email after payroll this week. Any board members who have not processed their paperwork, I will be sending <laughs> a reminder to please get done. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried stopping by, I think, twice, and you were gone both times. I'm like, oh, you actually see Lisa, not me. She does the paperwork with you. No, I, you, I think somebody emailed it to me the other day. I've got to sit down and print it. Fill it out. It's very easy to do. Oh, I know. You can probably know. take a picture of it and send it back to them. <laughs> <laughs> um, excellent. All right, moving on. Is there any new hires? All right, and any more public comment? Okay. Um, Next meeting is a regular meeting, Monday, January 2nd, 2023, 5.30, Rochester campus and via Google Meets. Um, we have one future agenda item, uh, the endowment funds, um, that we'll be able to um, give you some more update and hopefully we can make some decisions about uh, amounts. Uh, potential solar um, donation too. Okay. And I want to have uh, Matt Cooper um, possibly join the meeting. And so if we could have a time slot that I could then relay to him so he can give us a synopsis on what the system is, what it can produce, um, okay. some of the implications that we'd have to deal with, and as well as um, he took, when he did a, a bit, I think he, he did, did it, right? Yeah. Um, he took a look at the existing system, so I think he's got some feedback on that as well. Okay. Great. Yeah. Yeah. I'd love uh, if uh, Patrick, as a future agenda, just update us on the flag policy uh, discussion with the policy. Mm -hmm. uh, I Not now, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. It's just where, where it's at. It's not out of committee at this point, so there wouldn't be a lot to report at the moment, but maybe by, we'll see where they go. Right now, they, they, they're they not in a place to act up consensus. So gotcha. Okay, well then I didn't get it. That's premature, thanks. <laughs> okay, well if anybody has any throughout the next couple of weeks, email me, Jamie. Okay. One suggestion I'd, I'd have is to uh, perhaps inquire about public communication and comment more often during the meeting. I mean, uh, originally we didn't ask till the end and then I, I got on um, Ethan and he right. put it there at the beginning, but we go a long time and we should really- Have it a couple of times or something? Yeah, it's, it, it takes very often, no, there's no comment, but it's, a, I think, appropriate to ask for public comment. Do you like one? Yeah. Are you suggesting one like after discussion? I also don't want it to turn into a discussion of community when it's a discussion of the board. So that's the other thing I get fearful about. So I think it really needs to be designated in the agenda. Right. Because right. um, we still have some other districts. Well, one so right now where our discussion, discussion item. The community right. really is pulling up a chair at the board table and it's pretty uncomfortable at the moment. Right. Right. <laughs> But the, the, the point is, is that if you have public communication, um, it's, the, the, it's the responsibility of the chair to maintain order. Um, this was a problem for uh, another board in, the, in Rochester that 
for some reason they didn't know that they could a reasonable time limit is three minutes, right? And they were having these terribly long meetings. More than 200 words. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the responsibility of the, the uh, chair to you know, li limit public public comment. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so even though it's it's a little s slowing this up to have those times, it, it may disrupt the whole whole meeting. And it it gives a very good impression on the to the public that they're being heard. Well, maybe if you could email us and suggest where you would stick it in on the agenda, mm -hmm. that would be helpful. Yeah, well, I can discuss that then. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Uh, uh, all so right. Good. So moved. Seven thirty-six. Seven thirty-six.